from D. James Kennedy Ministries. This is Kennedy Classics. Welcome to Kennedy Classics. God, from the very beginning, outlined in the panorama of the stars the whole message of the gospel of Christ. What better way to appreciate the night sky than with a stunning illustration of the stars and constellations, accompanied by biblical descriptions of how each one proclaims the gospel of Jesus Christ. D. James Kennedy Ministries presents, for the first time, the exclusive Gospel Planisphere. This one-of-a-kind planisphere folds out to poster size and shows how, contrary to pagan astrology, God placed the zodiac in the heavens to proclaim the story of redemption. Contact us today to receive the Gospel Planisphere, a fold-out guide to the gospel in the stars that can only be obtained through D. James Kennedy Ministries. Hello, I'm Frank Wright, president of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. Merry Christmas and welcome to Kennedy Classics. As we approach the end of the year, we need your help to continue broadcasting the gospel and proclaiming biblical truth. Some generous friends of this ministry have established a $375,000 Proclaim the Gospel Matching Challenge Fund. Please contact us right away to match them with a generous donation, which will essentially double your impact at this crucial time. And we have some outstanding resources to thank you with that will show you how the stars in the sky proclaim the gospel message. And we'll tell you more about this later in the program. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11164, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339 or call toll free 888-332-3069 or you can go online to djkm.org. Well, it's Christmas time, but what does Christmas mean for the world? Jesus Christ, whose birth we celebrate this week, is not only the Son of God in flesh, but also the greatest man who ever lived. No one had a greater impact on this world. In one realm of human existence after another, the impact of Jesus and his followers through time has been nothing short of phenomenal. Even this very day, there are literally tens of millions of people who are being fed in the name of Jesus, poor people, who could otherwise starve. God coming into the world through the baby born in Bethlehem is still the greatest story ever told. But the positive influence of Jesus on our world continues to unfold. Nobody was more passionate to proclaim the truth of the transformation that Jesus has wrought upon the world than Dr. D. James Kennedy. He shares more in his message the greatest man who ever lived. Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, beginning with verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name 
which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And may God speak to our hearts through his word this day, and may his name ever be praised. Christmas is not only a special day, a very special day. It is, in the truest meaning of the word, a unique day. There is nothing like it in all of the world. There never has been and there never will be. Stop and think for a moment if somehow we could be lifted up from this place, from this city, from this planet, and look down upon our nation, we would discover that in every single city in America, in every town, in every village, in every hamlet in America, there would be people worshiping Jesus Christ. But that is not merely the province of this country. If you traveled south through Central America and South America all the way down to Patagonia, you would find in every nation and every city men and women worshiping Christ. Travel east to the continent of Europe and all of their nations and south into Africa Sierra Leone, Algeria, Morocco, Madagascar, and all of the nations of Africa, without exception, you would find people bowing the knee and worshiping by the tens of millions the Lord Jesus Christ. Travel westward again across the vast expanse of Asia, down into Australia, Tasmania, New Zealand, Borneo, Irian, Jaya, the Solomons, Vanuatu, and all of the thousands of islands down there. You will not find one where Christ is not adored. There is no nation, there is no territory on the face of this earth where he will not be worshipped. He is the greatest man who has ever lived on this planet. Of that, there is not the slightest doubt. And that is absolutely astonishing when you consider that he was cut off in his young manhood at 33 years of age. Plato was just a budding philosopher at 33. Many of the great writers lasted far longer than that before they wrote anything of significance. And so it was of many statesmen and other greats of the world. And yet, before he even would have fully matured by our standards, he was cut off as a malefactor crucified between thieves, abandoned by his followers. He wrote no books. And yet... The books written about him would fill the largest library in the world. He wrote no music, and yet more songs, more oratorios, more anthems, more hymns have been written about him than any man who ever lived. He never penned a poem, and yet the poems that exalt his greatness and glory would fill another library. He was the altogether lovely one. He never commanded any army. He never traveled 200 miles. And yet the army that would gladly give its life for him today is the largest army that has ever existed on this planet. The institution of his church is the largest institution that has ever existed in this world. His religion today is growing at an enormous pace, faster than it ever has done before. It is the kingdom, the everlasting kingdom, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the greatest person that ever walked upon this planet. You know why he is so great? 
Would you like to be great? Most people have some kind of hungering in their heart that they would like to be great in some sense of the word. Jesus taught us how. He said, he that would be greatest among you Let him be servant of all. He laid down his life. He endured the agonies of men. He sank into hell. He endured the wrath of Almighty God, his Father. All for our sake. To pay for our sins. And to save all of those that will trust in him. Henry Ford put the same truth in a more modern frame when he said it this way. If you would be great, find a need and fill it. He saw a need for mobility and he filled it and we say, he is a great man. Edison saw the need for light and after indefatigable labors, He produced the light bulb and we say, he is a great man. The Wright brothers saw the need for flight and invented the airplane and we say, they are great men. Jesus Christ saw our real need, our greatest need. Do you know what your greatest need is? Some of you may not. The greatest need that we have is very simply life. I guarantee you without a life, without life, you won't need an automobile, an airplane, or a light bulb. Step on the gas, you couldn't turn on the light. You certainly couldn't fly away without life. But Christ came to bring us life. He is the life of the world. In him was life, the Bible says. He said, I am he that was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And because I live, you that trust in me shall live also. I don't know what is most important to you in your life. For some people, it's fame. Well, fame won't make any difference when you're dead. If you're famous, you won't know it. For some people, it's relationships with others. They will be long over. Indeed, there's nothing that so cools the ardor of a lover as to kiss one on a cold, clammy forehead in a funeral. Whether it is wealth I don't care how many billions you should amass. They will do you no good whatsoever when you are dead. No, nothing will mean anything at all without life. And life comes only from God. And God gave us life, but sin short-circuited that life and brought death in its place. And Christ came to restore man to spiritual, eternal life. What a glorious thing that is. Can you imagine if in the newspaper this morning you had read in the headlines that scientists had discovered and tested a pill that was guaranteed to produce 300 years of life. And I don't mean 300 years of senile life, 300 years of life just sort of staggering around, 300 years of increasing arthritis, increasing pains here and there and everywhere. No, robust, vital life at the very peak of your virility as a man or a woman, active life. My goodness, can you imagine the furor? If they were selling it in California, there'd be a line all the way from the East Coast to get it really wouldn't matter how much they charge. 300 years of life, everything that you enjoy would be available to you. And it would be available for a very long time. And yet, dear friends, Christ offers us eternal life. 
You know, that's a term that we, we let trip from our tongue so easily, but we don't really think about what it means. Van Loon painted a word picture, I think, that describes it fairly well. He said, there is in the far north a huge mountain a hundred miles high. That's 20 times the height of Everest. It's made out of solid granite. It's a hundred miles wide and long at its base. And once every thousand years, a little tiny bird flies to the top of that mountain and sharpens its beak and flies away. It comes back a thousand years later and sharpens its beak and flies away again. When he said that gigantic granite mountain shall thus be totally worn away, then one minute of eternity would have passed. A vivid picture. Only one problem with it. It's false. When a trillion such mountains as that had been thus worn away, one second of eternity would not have passed. And the Bible makes it very clear that all of us will spend eternity either in the bliss and felicity of paradise or in the pain condign punishment of hell. Ever lasting, never ending life. Where will you be a trillion eons of centuries from now? Christ offers us paradise. In wonder of wonders, he offers it to us freely. He paid it all. He paid the price. He endured the punishment. He declared, it is finished, it is paid, it is done. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And he offers it freely to us if we will what? Stop doing what some of you are doing. And I'm thinking principally of the fact that some of you are trusting in yourselves that you are good enough to earn such a place. I talked to a very distinguished an outstanding man in South Florida this past week who does much good for many people. And I asked him what his hope of eternal life was based upon, and he said to me this, I have a pure heart. And I said to him, you have a big problem. Because God says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. I, Jehovah, know the heart. And the scripture says there is none righteous, no, not one. There is not a just man upon the face of the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. We are together become unprofitable. Ye are condemned already, said Christ. The whole world has flunked. We are all condemned. And that is why there is a Christmas. This is one huge death row. Did you know that? That's where you are on death row. You are tried, condemned, sentenced and waiting for the execution. Run. <laughs> Where are you going to run? From God. You cannot escape. You cannot plead innocent because he saw you do it. Do what? 
do everything you've done and most of which you've forgotten. The only thing you can do is change your plea as this man did this week and say, oh God, my heart is not clean. My heart is not pure. I am a sinner, unworthy and undeserving. I cast myself upon the mercy of the court. I kneel before the cross and I accept him who took the penalty for my sins and I receive from his gracious hand the gift of everlasting life. That is what Christmas is all about. Do you have that gift of all gifts? If not, don't go in to Christmas without it. It makes a mockery of the whole thing. Let us pray. Oh God, may Christ come and be born in the hearts of many even right here this day. For the truth is ever with us that though Christ a thousand times in Bethlehem be born, if he be not born in thee, thy soul is still forlorn. O oh God, may some right here in this sanctuary or within the sound of my voice traveling all over the world right now, who have not received that gift, who do not have eternal life, may they say, Lord Jesus, thou greater than all men, thou God himself, come into my life, quicken me from the deadness of my sins, wash me from mine iniquity and make me whiter than snow, that I may stand faultless before thy throne, clothed in thy perfect righteousness alone. I accept thee as Savior and Lord and God of my life. I repent of my sins. I turn from them and desire by your help and grace henceforth to follow thee in thy name. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer with Dr. Kennedy, then you have made the most important decision of your life. Jesus Christ said that he would come into your heart and that he would change your life, that he would forgive you and cleanse you and give your life new meaning and purpose. On this Christmas Sunday, you have just received the greatest gift ever given by the greatest person who ever lived, Jesus Christ. And we wanna offer you another gift that will help you get started in your new life. It's the book, Beginning Again, and it's designed to help you grow in your new faith. It includes the book of John from the New Testament and provides a wonderful introduction to reading the Bible, which should be part of your daily Christian life. It also contains answers to questions you might have about your new faith. To receive your copy of Beginning Again, just write to our address or call our toll-free number. Remember to ask for Beginning Again. God bless you and have a Merry Christmas. As you have just heard, the arrival of Jesus Christ into this world changed everything and still affects each of us every day. And we know that God announced beforehand through the prophets that he would send Christ into the world. But did you know that he also embedded that announcement in the creation itself? Discover how with an amazing new resource we have developed, the stunning Gospel Planisphere, which we will send you as our thanks for your generous donation to the vital work of this ministry. This beautiful Planisphere of the heavens clearly illustrates the story of the Gospel that God placed in the skies at creation, showing how each sign of the zodiac fits into the gospel story, and it folds out to a full poster size. 
There is simply nothing else you can find like this. And we will send it to you as our thanks for your generous support. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11164, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll-free 888-332-3069. Or go online to djkm.org. Some very generous friends of this ministry have stepped forward to establish a $375,000 Proclaim the Gospel Matching Challenge Fund to help us finish the year in the black. If you give right now, your impact will be essentially doubled as you match their challenge. So please contact us right away to help us finish 2018 in the black, ready to move forward with gospel effectiveness in 2019. If you are able to donate $50 or more, we will thank you by sending you the Planisphere plus Dr. Kennedy's revealing book, The Real Meaning of the Zodiac, which contains Dr. Kennedy's detailed research and writing on how the stars proclaim the gospel message. He strongly rejected pagan astrology, which is a perversion of the zodiac. But he recognized with the psalmist that the heavens proclaim the glory of God. Discover how in this groundbreaking book. And as our thanks for your generous donation of $100 or more, we will also include Dr. Kennedy's 13 message series on DVD or audio CD entitled The Gospel in the Stars, featuring messages on each sign of the zodiac and how they fit into the gospel story. This is by far the most requested set of messages ever from Dr. Kennedy, and they can be yours as our thanks for your generous donation of $100 or more. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11164, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free 888-332-3069, or go online to djkm.org. I'm Frank Wright. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Kennedy Classics. On behalf of our team at D. James Kennedy Ministries, we want to wish you and those you love best a truly joyous and blessed Christmas. We'll see you next time. Today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.